Howdy! My name is Kelly Johnson and I work with the PEER program at the College of Veterinary Medicine and Biomedical Sciences here at Texas A&M University. And we've put together a series of training videos to help you with your educational endeavors. So today, two of our veterinarian technicians here at the vet school, Delisa Ryland and Dana Smith, are going to demonstrate the proper procedures for drawing blood with their assistant, Lynn Dixie. Okay, we're gonna go over uh, the procedure for drawing blood from your patient. Um, we have our patient, Wynn Dixie, here. Um, and so we're gonna go over some of the locations that you would draw blood from and then the procedure that you would use. Um, there are many vessels that we can draw blood from. Some of the most common are our jugular vein, our cephalic vein, and our lateral saphenous vein, which is on the, the rear leg of our patient. So for uh, basic purposes uh, in a clinic setting, um, you would most likely draw blood from the front leg, which is the cephalic vein. And uh, at, here at the vet school, we, we usually try to save these vessels for the purpose of placing IV catheters. But in a clinical setting and a private practice, you would most likely be drawing blood from this vessel. So um, we are going to go over the procedure for drawing blood from a cephalic vein. For drawing blood from any vessel, you need uh, someone to restrain the patient properly for you so that uh, your restrainer is safe, your patient is safe, and the person drawing blood is safe as well. So you need for everybody involved, including the patient, to be safe. We're going to first wet down the hair with a little bit of alcohol, and then we're going to have our restrainer roll the vessel off, which will hold the vessel and make the, uh, the vessel wall distend for us so that we can see it and palpate it uh, and know where we're going to poke. For most intents and purposes, a 22 gauge needle, uh, most 22 gauge needles are blue, the lid is. Um, for most of our patients, a 22 gauge needle is going to be perfectly fine for drawing blood. Um, if we have a, an especially small patient, we may choose a smaller needle size, but for most purposes, um, a 22 gauge needle is going to be perfectly fine for drawing blood. We do have several tube types that we put blood into. Um, they have different additives in them. Uh, this purple top has EDTA in it. That is the coagulant that is used in it. And this green top tube uh, has lithium heparin in it. And this is the type of, uh, another type of tube that we use here at the vet school. Uh, we typically put our CBCs or our complete <laughs> our complete blood panels and a purple top and we generally put our uh, chemistry panels in a green top tube. So we're going to draw a small sample from Winn-Dixie just to show you what the procedure is. It is a good idea with any patient when you're going to be handling, handling any bodily fluid to place exam gloves on. Um, because you never know what the history of your patient is when they come in, especially if they're a good Samaritan. If someone just finds a dog on the street, you always want to wear gloves so that you protect yourself against anything that your patient may uh, bring into your clinic. You like my gloves? <laughs> hey, they're pretty. So as soon as I have my gloves on, my restrainer will do what we call rolling off the vessel and she will hold a tight grip with her thumb right in the elbow. And this will make the vessel that is on the top of her front leg pop up really nicely for us. And then we can wet down the fur. She doesn't have a lot of long fur, but in patients that do have long hair, this alcohol will help wet down the skin and actually lay the fur closer to the, the skin so that it's easier to, pal to visualize and palpate the vessel. So you can palpate the vein. When you uh, draw blood with a needle and syringe, you, well, you want to enter the skin at about a 30 degree angle with the bevel of the needle pointing up. So we're gonna enter the skin at a, about a 30 degree angle. And then we pull back gently on our plunger. We obtain the right amount of blood that we need for our blood test. And then we gently place our finger over the needle, remove the needle, and then hold off 
the vessel because we have we've now poked a hole in that vessel and we need for the hole to, to seal off so right now her body is sending all kinds of platelets and, and clotting factors to that tiny little hole that we poked with this needle in her arm so that it helps that hole seal off. After we obtain our blood sample we can gently place the needle into our blood tube. You want to let the suction in the tube drag the blood out of the, the syringe. You don't want to push the the plunger of the syringe to force the blood into the tube. If you do that, you may ruin the cells, the red blood cells that are in your sample. And if we are running a, a complete a CBC, one of the things we need to look at is the morphology of the cells. So if we force the blood into the tube, it may alter the morphology of our cells and we may get a false positive for uh, a disease process that may not be going on with our patient. So always treat your blood very gently. And once you have the blood in your tube, rock it back and forth to mix the blood sample with the, the anticoagulant that is in the, your tube. The procedure is the same for any color tube that you use. Gently put it in there, don't force the blood into the tube, just let the suction of the tube drag the blood into the tube. And that's the basic procedure for any blood draw from any vessel. Um, the same would be true for a back leg. The only difference would be the manner in which we would restrain our patient. Okay, uh, we're going to demonstrate the procedure for drawing blood from a jugular vein on our patient. Your restrainer should gently lift the patient's head up. The jugular vein usually runs here to the thoracic inlet right here on the chest. And what you wanna do is line your, the jugular vein is gonna run this direction. So if you put your thumb perpendicular to that and kind of slide your thumb down into the thoracic inlet and push in and up slightly, the jugular vein will rise for you and you can palpate it. Hers is right here in her little cowlick on her fur. Once you have located that, you can use your alcohol again to lay down the fur so that you can better visualize and palpate your vessel. From this point, the procedure for drawing blood is exactly the same as it would be from a leg or an arm and you can Put the needle into your patient with the bevel up at a 30 degree angle and once you're in the vessel you can draw your blood sample the exact same way that you would from a front leg. That's a good girl. In order yeah. to draw blood from a lateral saphenous vessel, which is going to be in the back leg of your patient, your patient needs to lie down on one side or the other. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's a good girl. Sometimes the, the biggest trick is to actually uh, convince your patient that you need them to lay in either right or left lateral recumbency. So we are going to have Win Dixie here lie in right lateral recumbency. Okay. And sometimes with larger dogs, this could take more than one person to do. So I'm going to gently restrain her head and pick her up. So she's now on her side. And when a patient is in lateral recumbency. You always want to place your hands on the down leg, on the side that's down, and that helps you control your patient as, as they let, lie on the table. You also want their head to be behind your elbow if they're in, in lateral recumbency, so that if they try to get up, then you can uh, use your elbow to, to put gentle pressure on their neck so that they continue, they continue to lie down. Um, also, if a patient is going to offer to bite you, this could help prevent your restraining person from getting bitten. I don't think she's gonna bite us. <laughs> so the, the vessel we're going to draw blood from is this lateral saphenous vein on her left rear leg. So I'm gonna get in position to do that. The person restraining is going to hold off the vessel by placing her uh, hand around the back side of the patient's knee and this will make this vessel stand up right here across her rear leg. The vessel runs at this angle so we can lie the hair down again with alcohol and from this point the procedure would be exactly the same as drawing blood from from the front leg. Just make sure that your needle and syringe are parallel with the vessel and then enter the vessel at a 30 degree angle with the bevel pointing up. Obtain your blood um, some patients are not quite as easy to place in the right lateral recumbency as this patient is and if they struggle their blood pressure is going up because they're anxious and they're nervous so their blood pressure is going to skyrocket. If that happens while you're in the course of drawing blood 
those platelets and the clotting factors that rush to the hole that you've poked with your needle may not get there fast enough and blood may leak out of that hole so they may get a hematoma. We can prevent that by placing a small band-aid over the insertion site where we placed our needle. Um, and we use uh, small 4x4s or 3x3 claws and we place that over the insertion site and wrap it with some bed. We have some 3x3 gauze squares and we fold these over at least in half and we place them over the insertion site where we've drawn blood. We take a little bit of vet wrap and we wrap this with gentle pressure. We don't want it to be too tight but we also don't want it to be too loose so that they continue to bleed through the hole that we've poked. So if we put this bandage on here, loose enough to where their toes won't swell, but tight enough so that they don't continue to bleed, then this should prevent any further hematoma and reduce the bruising that may happen after our blood draw. Well, we hope you enjoyed that video. And on behalf of the entire peer team, we wish you the best of luck with your educational endeavors. Don't forget to check out our website at peer.tamu.edu for other training videos and free resources. Thanks again, and we hope to see you soon.